Good evening, dear students. Our topic of discussion today is myringotomy. So, from the name itself, myringo and otomy. Myringo means tympanic membrane, and otomy means making an opening. So, how do we define myringotomy? The first point is definition. So, myringotomy is making an incision in the tympanic membrane to drain out the suppurative or non-suppurative contents, or aeration of the uh, eustachian tube or the middle layer is known as myringotomy. Now what are the indications of myringotomy? That, that is when do you go for making an incision in the tympanic membrane? So there are broadly two uh, indications. Number one is acute otitis media and number two is otitis media with effusion. Now you might think why should we go for uh, myringotomy in cases of a a acute otitis media? Because you have learned that in acute otitis media, most of the cases suffice with the medications. Now, there are few uh, conditions within acute otitis media why you will go for myringotomy. So, in acute otitis media, number one will be when the patient is suffering from excruciating pain. Number two, when you find a bulging tympanic membrane in acute otitis media, bulging in such a way that you, that next perforation can occur. And you know any perforation that occurs naturally is difficult to heal. So it might turn into chronic otitis media. We do not want that. And number three is when in cases of acute otitis media, you find that complications might be taking place. Like for example, facial nerve paralysis. In those cases, we go for myringotomy. Now next, we go for myringotomy in cases of otitis media with effusion. Now, there is an entity associated with myringotomy and that is known as grommet or ventilation tube or tympanostomy tube. Now, from the name itself, ventilation tube, you understand that this tube helps in the ventilation of the middle ear. Now, when we use it, it provides for aeration of the middle ear. Okay. So, in mostly in cases of otitis media with diffusion, we go for grommet insertion. Now, another thing is, the myringotomy is also known as tympanostomy. Why? Tympano means tympanic membrane and ostomy or otomy means making an opening. Same, myringotomy or tympanotomy or tympanostomy. Now, what are the preoperative evaluations that you need to go for? Now, the first is you need to take a proper history. You need to go for a good examination, an otoscopic examination or autoendoscopic examination while, uh, when you can know that it is a case of acute otitis media or otitis media with effusion and you can plan your surgery. Next is you should go for audiometry. Number two is audiometry. In audiometry, you will find a conductive hearing loss. Number three is tympanometry. In tympanometry, you know that in otitis media with diffusion, you get a B type of graph. So these are the points in preoperative evaluation. And number four is the procedure. So for knowing any procedure, you, you should first know that under what kind of anesthesia you would go for. So you can go for general anesthesia in cases of children or in adults who do not consent for uh, going in local anesthesia. Okay. And in uh, local anesthesia for consenting adults. Okay. So which anesthesia usually we use? We use lidocaine. So now the procedure proper. So for that we need to go to this diagram. I have drawn a brief diagram or a rough diagram. So now in this procedure, you can see this is the right tympanic membrane. So you should know that there are two types of incision in myringotomy. Number one is a circumferential incision. Number two is a radial incision. So this incision is known as a circumferential incision and this one is a radial incision. Now circumferential incision is usually made in 
posterior or inferior quadrant in cases of acute otitis media and your radial incision is made in anterior inferior quadrant or posterior inferior quadrant in cases of otitis media with effusion. Do remember this point. Now the next question that may come out in your mind is why won't we go for an incision in the posterior superior quadrant? Now you can see in the diagram that here, okay, in this area, that is the area of posterior superior quadrant, you, might, you will find ossicles behind it. When you see the tympanic membrane, you can see the shadow of the ossicles. So there is a high chance of injuring the ossicles if, we, if you make an incision in that quadrant. So that is why incisions are not made in posterior superior quadrant. Okay. So now another question comes like what should be the size of the incision? So now if you have to place a grommet, you should make the incision such a way that the grommet fits just snugly into the incision. Okay, it should not be too tight or too loose. Okay, so this is roughly the picture of a grommet or a ventilation tube or a uh, tympanostomy tube. Now, the types of tympanostomy tube that usually we have are Donaldson tube or T tube. These are the common varieties of tympanostomy tubes that we utilize. Okay, so complications. So now what are the common complications in this case? First one is otoria or ear discharge. So now if you have made a perforation in the uh, tympanic membrane, so you can understand there will be ear discharge. And actually we want that ear discharge in cases of otitis media with effusion. Okay, but if this discharge keeps on persisting, then it is a complication. Okay. Then the second complication is you could cause injury to the ossicles. The third complication is lacerations in the external auditory canal. While you go towards the tympanic membrane through the external auditory canal, you might cause lacerations in the external auditory canal. The fourth complication is your grommet. Supposing you have placed this grommet out here, so your grommet might intrude inside the middle ear or it might extrude into the external artery canal that is early extrusion okay so these are few complications of myelotomy so this is for today if you have any queries regarding this topic please ask me in the comment section i will be happy to help Thank you.